afternoon. It's once again a Friday in the p.m. It's cold in Chicago, but that's all right. You know, Chicagoans don't worry about the cold weather. It might be cold, but people just keep moving. They keep stepping. They keep on doing all the things that they had planned to do. I have had a very exciting and wonderful day. I started out this morning at the city of Chicago's 32nd annual interfaith breakfast, celebrating the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at the Marriott Marquis Hotel and honoring the Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson. It was a great morning that the mayor and the city of Chicago put on. I enjoyed every minute of it. The trio that sang, I didn't bother about trying to eat breakfast and all that kind of stuff. But I guess it also was good for those who partook of it. I had a couple cups of coffee. and You know, there used to be a time when people would tell black children that coffee would make you black as a part of their effort to convince you not to drink coffee, the caffeine. And they would tell you that coffee would make you black. That was before James Brown said it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. That was before Stokely Carmichael jumped up on the truck and said, black power. That was before, out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, understanding what it meant. I think what gods there may be for my unconquerable soul. Black is beautiful, black is beautiful, and it's beautiful to be black, don't be afraid. But you know, after that I had a great meeting later on then I met with a beautiful young lady who was just as smart as she could be, and she was trying to figure out an intern. I met with another lady from Maywood, Illinois, uh, Miss, who's had some trouble. She feels that the mortgage company is trying to take her property from her, and we had a good meeting. She lives in Maywood, Illinois. Then I had a great meeting at 2 o'clock with the director of the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services, Director B.J. Walker. We had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful conversation about child welfare issues and the number of black children who live with someone other than their natural parents, which happens to be the case in my congressional district, I have more of those than any other district in the United States of America. And so it's something that we're very much concerned about. We talked a great deal about black adoption and trying to figure out how to get more black children adopted. We did all of that tomorrow. We have our annual winter resource fair. And I thought for a moment that, you know, people were going to get lulled into not thinking it was needed. And that's because the weather had just been frigid. Then we had a couple of days where things kind of lit up. But then on today, we got shocked back to the reality of what is real. So if you got trouble with your lights or gas and don't have any heat because your gas bill has been more than you could pay or your electric bill, if you heat with electricity, has been more than what you could pay, you can come tomorrow, beginning at 10 o'clock, 10 to 1, to the Mark, T. Skinner Classical School, 1260 West Adams Street. There's free parking at the Whitney Young High School parking lot. And somebody will be there from my office, from CETA, 
from People's Gas, from uh, Commonwealth Edison, from NECOR Gas, from the South Austin Coalition to try and help you get your gas and lights turned back on so you don't have to be cold. We also have some people who have promised to be what we call angels, and two of those are Dr. Willie Wilson and also Cook County Commissioner Richard Boykin, because in some instances you need money. You need part of the money to kick in the public money and the public help you're going to receive. Both of them have agreed that they will be angels and will help people who don't have all the money that they need. Of course, when I leave there, I'm going to the home going services for Miss Bessie Mae Gladney, and they're going to be at the Mount Vernon Baptist Church at 2622 West Jackson Street. And of course, she is the sister of Mr. Garfield Majors, a fellow that I do a radio show with on Sunday nights on 1450 AM. She is his oldest sister, and they're going to be having a service for her. Monday, Sunday, oh my goodness, I got all kind of, 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 of churches to attend and all kind of good things that are going on at churches. Then, uh, of course, Sunday we have at 4 o'clock the Northern Illinois Conference 2018 MLK celebration at the Morgan Park United Church. I'm going to be there at 4 o'clock along with a whole bunch of other folks, and we're going to be talking about Dr. Martin Luther King and the impact that his life has had on all of us. Monday morning, Rainbow Push got their annual scholarship breakfast honoring Dr. King. That's at 8 o'clock at the Hyatt. But the Village of Hillside, their Human Relations Commission, always puts on a gigantic Martin Luther King celebration. I'm going to try to be there. I represent Hillside. Mayor Tamborini and all those folks will be there. And also, there's also going to be a commemoration of Dr. Martin Luther King at the Stone Temple Baptist Church. And the, 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 what happens on that day is a Jewish synagogue from out in the suburbs comes to worship generally with the Stone Temple Church, and they just have a great, great thing honoring Dr. Martin Luther King. I'm going to try to make all of those things that I can. Uh, all of it is a part of my schedule, and some folks say, yeah, you politicians do it when there's elect. Look, I do it every year. As a matter of fact, whether there's an election or not, where the election is going on. I had the good fortune to meet Dr. King. As a matter of fact, Dr. King spoke at the undergraduate school that I went to and managed to get a degree. But he spoke before I got there, and so there was controversy about him being there when I got there. The president almost got fired because the state legislature did not like it that he had invited Dr. King to be the commencement speaker the year before. When I came to Chicago, I got a chance to meet Dr. King, to march with Dr. King, to be part of the movement, to be in Dr. King's presence, and I can tell you nobody has impacted America, and perhaps even our world, the way Dr. King did of course, Nelson Mandela had a tremendous amount of impact on South Africa and what has ultimately happened there. But it's just a wonderful weekend to celebrate one of the greatest Americans who ever lived, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I think we got a call, so let me go to the phone right quick and see 
if my caller is still there. Caller, are you still there? Yeah, you know what, Connie Davis? James, I'm wonderful. How are you? Hey, now, you know James Brown, right, when he made that song? Oh, man James man Brown man. said loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Yes. Okay, when he said this a man word, it ain't no man word, this is God word. All now, right, say, yeah. all right, it's God's way. Yeah, and then everything is coming out. And then uh, God is uh, exposing a lot of the pe these people out here, what they doing behind closed doors. And uh, I have a lot of respect for you, everybody. Okay, I have a lot of respect for Oprah Winfrey. And uh, and, uh, think she'd make a good president? Yeah, okay. Me too. Now, okay, the reason <laughs> yeah. I say that, because, uh, because I think she, she I think, okay, I got to choose, okay, okay, what I'm trying to say, she might win or she might not. If it be the will of God, she win. And then I'm just going to say that, God is supposed to a lot of these people out here, what they doing wrong, behind closed doors. And, uh, this is, Jack Brown, when he made that song, this, uh, bad word, it ain't no bad word, this is God word. You know, you're so right. I was reading the Bible the other night. I decided to do a little read, and I was reading... The book of Genesis. And eventually I had to put it down and go to bed and go to sleep. But I tell you, it was just great reading about the beginning of the earth. It was without firm or void. And I got the understanding that it was a mass of darkness. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And it's been shining ever since. Hey, Connie Davis. Yes, sir. Okay, but I didn't know it happened to Open Winfrey when uh, they said it happened to her, too, but I don't know. I don't know. That's what the uh, people in the media be saying. I don't know. But a lot you of know, I, sometimes there are things we just don't know, James. I often say there are some things that I can't explain. There's uh -huh. something within that holdeth the rain. But there is one thing that I do know. And that is, my God is real, so real deep down within my soul. So you may not know everything, but if you can know some things, uh -huh. that's all right. I'm just going to set back in that God has everything, because he's going to be creator. God bless y'all, Connie Davis. All right. Thank you so much for your call. God bless you and keep you, keep you warm and comfortable doing this cold spell. And anybody that's cold in their home, know that you can come on out to the Mark Skinner Classical School, 1260 West Adams Street, on tomorrow from 10 to 1. Bring information that tells how much money you earn. Make sure you've got your Social Security number and the Social Security number for everybody in your house. Bring your most recent light and gas bill. If you own your property, bring a deed. Or so if you want to try to get your furnace, you can even get help if you got a furnace that ain't working properly and you own your own home. Make sure you bring your tax bill showing that the property is yours or your mortgage book or a quit claim deed with the stamp from the county recorder. And if you're living in a mobile home, bring your vehicle title. And you bring your, if you're building owner, your certification and work authorization. All of this help is available tomorrow at the Skinner Classical School, 1260 West Adams. We thank Commonwealth Edison. We thank People's Gas. We thank CEDAR. We thank the South Austin Coalition. We thank all of those who are making it happen, and it will happen for you. Let me make another announcement. Of course, uh, the Parent University has opened at Michelle Clark High School. And what that really means is that, you know, you can go over there and learn how to be a good parent. I mean, being a good parent is a very important thing to do. And if you're concerned about your child's education, you're concerned about them growing up and all that kind of stuff, go over and learn. 
Michelle Clark, I lived for 20 years. Michelle Clark was the closest school to my home. I lived right down the street from Michelle Clark for 20 years. It was a good school then. It was an elementary school. It was a middle school, but now it's a high school. Go on over there and join up. I also need to make an announcement. My good friend and one of the best social workers I have ever, ever known died the other day. His name is Ernie Jenkins, and he started doing social work in Chicago in 1956. He worked at the youth centers. He was the founder of the West Side Association for Community Action. And I must agree that he and I were co-founders of that agency with a number of other people. But he and his wife, Gloria, ran it for many years after Ernie left the Y. He started it while working for the YMCA, and he then founded WACA as an entity of his own. Uh, there's going to be a memorial celebration, celebration of his life next Saturday, January the 20th, from 1 p.m. to 5 at the Universal Entertainment Center that Reverend Johnny Coleman built at 11901 South Loomis. And of course, people who want to make any kind of contributions and all to continue on his work, they can send a contribution to the West Side Association for Community Action. Quite frankly, I was the first president of the West Side Association, and Ernie was running it and doing all the real work and that kind of thing. And then I ran for the city council, got elected, and I resigned as president of the West Side Association for Community Action. And Ernie and Gloria and Earlene and Mo Fletcher and their Ernie's daughters after they were born. He and Gloria have two beautiful daughters, Gloria and Lola and they are trying to carry on. So if you want to embrace these two young ladies, they are just wonderful, wonderful. And we wish them all the success in the world as they try and keep the work of their parents. And I don't talk about Ernie without talking about Gloria because they were tremendous partners. You can give us a call. We still got a little bit of time, 312-738-1060, and we can talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. Many people, of course, are talking about the comments that the President of the United States uh, supposedly made, talking about some of the countries as they were discussing immigration, and I understand he may have had some unkind things to say, about some of the countries like Haiti and others, and which is so unfortunate, because you would think that the role of leadership is to try and bring our world closer together so that rather than having the threat of discord or the threat of war and the threat of people being against each other and turning against each other, Reverend Jesse Jackson was always fond of saying, we need to turn towards each other as opposed to being against each other. We should help each other's up. As a matter of fact, the only time Dr. Rev. Jackson said that you should look down at a person is when you're trying to help them up. And if you're not trying to help them up, don't ever look down think down or call them down. And I wish President Trump would take heed to the lessons taught by the Reverend Jesse 
Lewis Jackson. Carla, are you there? Uh, yes, Congressman. And it's a great day to be on God's green earth. It is indeed, even if he let the wind blow a little bit. <laughs> well, listen, we might need it. You know, I've been waiting for I just knew people be calling you today about what our president been doing in Sam. And then I, I, then I got up and I read today's paper and even what he wanted to do to people that don't have what some people have, don't have. Well, it seemed like anything that that man, he, he, he obviously, he do not like people that don't have anything. He don't want the people from different countries coming in that's starving, don't have that much. Uh, it seemed like he just don't care. But listen, let's go back to what his nationality is. He's a German. So when his people start leaving over there, why did they leave and then come over here? So I guess what's good for the gander is good for the goose. But let me tell you something. As a sitting president of the United States of America, when is it going to be enough? I mean, when? When do this stop? And there's number two ways. It's going three. Either going to go to jail. He's going to get impeached, or I don't even want to even say that because I don't want to see nobody. But again, he's not right. You know, we've been telling you this, and it's unfair to get you to start agreeing with a lot of things, what we say. But I know, you know, you think. You have a heart, you have a conscience, and you got good goddamn sense. And I'm sorry to say that. You got good sense. You got good common sense. Again, we just want to know when it's going to stop. All right. And another thing, I wish we had people like you from the south side, uh, the south suburb area, would come out and always talk about what they're doing, doing something good. We don't have nothing like that, so we got always got to go to the west side to get good, <laughs> and that's the truth. Let me get out there so I can hear you. All response, right. And thanks for taking the call. A lot of my great friends that live and work on that south side of Chicago and out in suburban Cook County. As a matter of fact, my sister lives in suburban Cook County out in Hazelcrest. Carla, are you there? And I have Hello. a nephew in Chicago yes. Heights. I my wanted brother to ask lives you... out in Chicago Heights. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. I wanted to ask you if you foresee us actually getting the border wall. I know it's like part of budget negotiations. Do you actually think that's going to happen? I hope not, and I will not vote one dime, one penny one scintilla to build a wall dividing our country from Mexico. I hope not, and no, I don't believe that we're going to do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Caller, are you there? Yes, sir. Good evening, good uh, Congressman. Please go right ahead. We got yeah. two minutes. Yeah. Okay, this is ready. You know what? It just, I, I'm a Mexican-American. I fought for my country proudly, just like you did, and I want to walk. I don't want other people coming in here. I don't want other people, the people that don't know how much one one is, then we have the smart people. We'll get you right in. What, what, we already have too many people that don't know how much one and one is. So you're wrong in about, the, I won't put one cent All right, I don't want to cut you off. Now. Thank you. But our time is up. Plus, uh, you just said you fought in other countries for other people. And I would imagine that you were fighting so that they could experience some of the democracy that we try and guarantee in this country. And so I always say that we are a country that's trying to become that more perfect union that our forefathers and unfortunate no foremothers was there when they wrote the Constitution. But hey, it's been a great day. 
Thanks to all of our callers, all of our listeners. You are so wonderful. And I'm so glad that you're inside and not outside. Because, baby, it's cold outside. See you next week. <laughs>